Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In today's video, we are going to address an important question, which I believe a lot of you have thought of. Is it true that only engineers can crack the cat? When it comes to cat, a perception has been created, especially because of the quantity ability and data interpretation section, that it caters to a certain kind of audience, in this case, engineers. But there are a lot of details behind this that you need to understand before we even think of making a statement like that. When you look at the CAT aspirant pool, nearly 50% of the CAT takers come from engineering background. And because quant as well as DI requires some level of comfort with numbers and calculations, people tend to think that it is easy for engineers to crack the test. But let's understand four important details which will help us figure out whether there is any merit in the statement that only engineers can crack the CAT. So the first thing that we need to understand is the quantitative skills that are assessed on the CAT. If you look at what kind of topics are asked, you will realize that they are nothing but things that all of us have studied till the 10th standard. Numbers, arithmetic, algebra, geometry, P and C probability. All of us have done this in some or the other way when we were in school. And there is no higher mathematics questions such as limits, derivatives, integration and so on. So though engineers are more in touch with mathematics because of the maths that they do while they are in college, it is not really an advantage to them because they are not studying these topics. They are doing a lot of higher mathematics and engineering mathematics, which is not going to help them specifically when it comes to CAD preparation. And we know that non-engineers and engineers will have different comfort with numbers. And that is why when we are doing our batches and our online programs, we ensure that we start with the basics so that non-engineers also feel comfortable with the quantitative skills before they actually get into the core topics that are there. Another thing that I think scares a lot of students is the calculation speed or the emphasis on calculating faster. A lot of times you will realize that just knowing the basic calculation techniques is going to be sufficient to solve questions and you don't have to be someone who is a human calculator to crack the cat. But definitely you will have to focus on learning all your tables, squares, cubes, reciprocals and percentage equivalents and so on and some calculation techniques to calculate faster. And the good thing about CAT is that you're going to get an on-screen calculator. So just in case you encounter something wherein you realize that I'm going to take a lot of time to calculate this, simply use the on-screen calculator. So this whole emphasis on having a very high calculation speed is not really something that you should be worrying about. Rather, get your fundamentals sorted and see how you can calculate faster with whatever techniques you are aware of. The third thing that you need to consider is the academic diversity bit. Because a lot of B schools over the last few years have actually started making conscious efforts to increase the number of non-engineers or percentage of non-engineers in the batch. If you look at IMA for example, last year they had 28% of the batch as non-engineers which was earlier 24%. IMB also had 28% of its batch as non-engineers which was in the previous year just about 13%. So these IMs are making conscious efforts to increase non-engineers or to encourage non-engineers to apply for the CAT. If you look at other institutes as well, for example, if you look at IM Lucknow, which has 5% weightage for diversity combined of academic diversity and gender diversity. You look at IM Indore, which has 6% and IM Koi Code, which has 10% weightage to academic plus gender diversity. So they're actually encouraging non-engineers in some sense which means that if you are a non-engineer, you have a slight advantage over engineers. And the last point is very important, which is your own mindset. I have seen that a lot of times non-engineers keep telling themselves that they are not good at quant, they cannot get better at quant. You have to maintain a growth mindset that I can get better at this and work towards it. When you keep telling yourself that I'm not good at something, you don't practice it enough. And because of that, you don't get better at it. If you look at the last year's CAT data, which was CAT 21, out of 47 people who had more than 99.98 percentile, nine were actually non-engineers. So this whole myth that you have to have an engineering background to do well on the CAT, it's something that you should definitely not believe in. Believe rather in the growth mindset that I can get better at this and work or make conscious effort towards working on it. So here is a quick summary of what we discussed. Firstly, the kind of syllabus that CAT has or the skills that are assessed on the quantitative section 
do not necessarily have any advantage towards engineers when you look at it. Secondly, the calculation speed is a little overrated and having basic command over calculation techniques, tables, squares, cubes, etc. plus smart usage of the on-screen calculator should be sufficient. We also looked at how non-engineers have advantages at some of the B schools and engineers have a disadvantage because of the diversity focus that the B schools have these days. And lastly, maintaining growth mindset is very, very important. So whether you are an engineer or a non-engineer, if you think that you can get better at quant or the DI section and keep working towards it, I am sure that you are going to have the right outcome. So thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.